All right, I'm going to go ahead and do a key for this first test. I'm going to be using Excel to do my calculations. I really do encourage you to use software as much as possible. On the test, you can do your calculation on the spreadsheet and then just translate your result to the paper. In practice, that's something that's what you would do. All right, so let's look at problem number one. So this is uh, exercise number one. And then part A. And let's just save one A here. Okay. All right, so it says, given the series 1 over x plus 2 equals 1 minus x over 2 plus x over 2 squared and so on, find the absolute approximate error when the first three and the first four terms are used to estimate 1 over 1.05. Give your answer to two significant figures. All right. So uh, let's see. So we know that when you want to find absolute approximate error, it's going to be the difference between two successive approximations. What are the two successive approximations here? The first three and the first four terms. First three terms, one, two, three. Those are three terms. First four terms, one, two, three, four. Now some people took these terms and these terms. This is a third order term. This is a third order approximation. That's not really the first three terms. First three terms is first term, second term, third term. Okay. So uh, I suppose some people might call this the zeroth term. Uh, the upshot is if you're not sure what something means, it's better to ask. And I'll try to make an effort to anticipate any misunderstandings there. I think I took off a minimal amount for that. So let's see. So here we want the uh, value of x. Okay, certainly we're going to be using x. Now what's the value of x? Well, I want 1 over x plus 2 to give me 1.05. In order to make that happen, you can work it out. x has got to be 0 0.1. That's the only way that you can use this series to estimate this quantity. All right, let's do the terms now. So that's uh, a 1, 2, 3, 4. We only need four terms. First term is going to be 1. Second term is going to be minus x over 2. Next term is going to be equal to x over 2 squared. And the next term is going to be minus x over 2 cubed. Now there are fancier ways you could input this, but it's just a nice way to organize your information. All right, so let me do the first three terms. Or these are the approximation. This is the first three terms. All right, so this would be equal to the sum of the first three terms. And then first four terms, this would be equal to the sum of first four terms. And then we want the absolute approximate error. Whoops, something went strange there. We'll just go back. The absolute approximate error. It's going to be the absolute value. And this, I'm not asking for relative error. I just said absolute approximate error. So it's the difference between my more accurate estimate minus my less accurate estimate. Now, the astute uh, observer may notice that that's actually the same thing as the fourth term. So I could have just put in the, fourth, the absolute value of the fourth term. But uh, I've done this already, so let's go ahead with that. And let's stretch this out a little bit. OK. Now, notice that. I asked for two significant figures. Here I have 0, 0, 0, 1, 2, 5. So, so should I choose 1, 2, or 1, 3? And when you're doing errors, you always want to do the most conservative. So if I want two sig figs for, for the uh, ap absolute approximate error, uh, that's going to be uh, uh, equal to uh, uh, 0 0.00013. So that should be your answer. All right, now we go on to part B. It says, using part A as your error estimate, give the number of significant digits uh, when the first four terms are used. All right, now some people uh, mistook what I was trying to say here. Some people were trying try to figure out the number of significant digits in the answer to A. Now, if you think about it, how can you have significant digits in an error? An error is basically a estimate of how fuzzy your knowledge is. It's like saying, 
exactly, I want to know exactly how fuzzy your knowledge is. And if you, if you knew exactly how fuzzy your, your knowledge is, then it wouldn't be fuzzy anymore. So what I meant here was the number of significant digits in the estimate for 1 over 1.05. Again, this is a, a, a question, the, the case where if you're not sure what is meant, you should, you should ask. Right. Because uh, the question of uh, exactly how, uh, I'm sorry, the number of significant digits in your, er, er, in, in your error is like, how, what's the number of significant digits in a plus or minus? Well, since it's a plus or minus, it's not even a definite value. Okay, so uh, what I want is the error estimate in my estimate for 1.05. And I'm using the first four terms. Okay. All right, so let's look at part B. Now, to get the number of significant digits, I need to compare the value with the absolute approximate error. Okay, so the value in this case was here. And the approximate error okay, was here. All right, now, what does this tell me about the number of significant uh, figures? The 9 is significant, the 5 is significant. All right, now, is the 2 significant? 2 corresponds to this 0 here. Now, the largest the error could be is uh, 0 0.0001. That would not change the 2 into something else, right? If I had 0. 0.0006, this 2 could be off. It could be, a, it could be a, a, a 3. It's possible. But if I'm only off by 0. 0.0001, there's no way that this 2 could be off, right? So that means I have 1, 2, 3 significant figures. All right, let's go on to part B, part C rather. Find the true absolute error when the first four terms are used to estimate 1.05. Give your answer to three significant figures. Okay, so here I'm going to take the true error. And this is going to be equal to, well, it's the true value. So it's, it's going to be 1 over 1.05. minus my approximation, uh, using the first four terms, that's this here. And I want the absolute value. I want true absolute error. Okay. So this is 5595. Five, now this I can, I can, uh, uh, get this, so let's see, how am I, how am I going to do this? I says answer to three significant figures, so that's going to be equal to point zero, 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 and then there's a 595, five, right? right? So I have one, two, three, four, five, and then the six is here. So you can see how many zeros there. I'm doing this because I'm looking forward to part D. Part D is asking me the number of significant digits when the first four terms are used. I would use the same method that I used for part B. I would compare this number to my actual value. All right. So let me finish this off and I'll just write it like this. Okay, so then part D. So in this case, what's going on? If I want to compare this value to the value here, I can see that one, two, three, four, four digits is not a problem. The fifth digit, there's a problem. Because if the error is bigger than point is bigger than uh, if I if I had an error of five nine five, then this digit would be off by one. Okay, so this digit I can't depend on, but I can depend on the first four digits. So this would be four sig figs. Okay, so this is the answer to this one, and this is the answer to this one. I could do either one of these. Okay, so that's my answer to problem one. All right, let's move on to problem two. Problem two says, suppose we represent floating point numbers in binary format, one bit for the sign, six bits for mantissa, five bits for the bias exponent. 
using this format altogether 1 plus 6 plus 5 12 bits find the binary representation for 143.5 well, first of all, let me convert this to binary fixed point, and then we can figure, then we can worry about binary floating point. Now, people did very well to do the uh, there. There's the uh, iterative method for doing this. Uh, I'm just uh, I just want to do it in, in line, so and I know the powers of two, so I can do this. So I, so I can say 143 is equal to well 128 goes in. Once you take out 128, then you have 15.5. Now 15, I happen to know, is 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1. And then there's the 0.5, so plus 0 0.5. Okay. Let's check that. So this is 136, 140, 143.5. Uh, okay. So that gives me what binary representation? Well, 128 is 2 to the 7th. So two to the, I have 2 to the 7th. No 2 to the 6th, no 2 to the 5th, no 2 to the 4th, 2 to the 3rd, 2 squared, 2 to the 1st, 2 to the 0, 2 to the minus 1. And here, there's a point here. So this is the binary fixed point representation. Okay. Now, what is the mantissa going to be? All right, if I'm going to be consistent here, I really should move this over here and call this fixed point rep. What is the mantissa going to be? Well, I have six bits for the mantissa. Remember that you take off the one. So my six bits are 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1. Here we go. Okay. Now, I'm oh, sorry, um, I have to do this. Let's see if it works this time. Okay, so let's just do... Uh, we'll do it that way. Okay. All right, so now I need to get the biased exponent, right? Biased exponent. Now, what is the exponent? The exponent, well, like I said, this is 2 to the 7, so the exponent is 7. Okay. Now, what's the bias? Well, I have 5 bits for the biased exponent. You can compute what the bias is from this five bits here. And for that, it's best just to remember the formula. Uh, I will explain, but it's best just to remember the formula. How large a number can I express with five bits? Well, five bits would give me two to the zero, two to the one, two to the two, two to the three, two to the four. And uh, I showed in class that that number is two to the fifth minus one. So that's 32 minus one. Basically, you want half of your numbers to be negative and half of your numbers to be positive. Right. Uh, now, 31 doesn't have a halfway point, so it, what you actually do is you take the 32 divided by 2 gives you uh, 16, then subtract 1, so the bias is 15. Okay. So the biased exponent is going to be equal to 7. I'm sorry, it's equal to this plus this. That's your biased exponent. So I want the binary for this. Again, I just do this in my, in my uh, head here. 22, the largest power is uh, 16. Largest power to 16. Uh, then, th then what's left over is 6, so there's no 8. There's a 4, and there's a 2. And then there's uh, no 1, because it's even. And this is exactly uh, five bits. So we're good. Okay. All right. So that gives me the mantissa and the biased exponent. And I also have the sine bit. So first sine bit, then mantissa, then biased exponent. So the answer is sine bit is zero because there's because it's positive. Mantissa is 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, and, by, and the uh, exponent is 1, 0, 1, 1, 0. Okay, so that's my answer. All right. Now, part B. So this is problem 2A. 
this problem to be for, I don't know if you can hear the rain in the background, hope you can hear me above it. Uh, so for part B, I want the round off error when the representation is used. All right, so question is, if I convert this back to decimal, do I get 143.5? Okay. Now, the way to see that is notice when we took the mantissa, we left off the last two bits. Those are not included in the mantissa. So that's going to be my error. Right, you can do it that way, and you can just do the conversion back. So if you, if you, if you, if you converted this, this back, you would find that's the same answer, that what's left over was the, which was not converted is this 1.1 in binary. Now what's 1.1 in binary? So you convert back and take the difference. And if you do that, you'll find that you get 1.1 in binary, which is 1.5 in decimal. Right. All right, let's go on to problem three. This was a challenging problem for many people. Okay. All right, so here let's do problem 3A. And what we have is a formula for distance traveled by falling, falling object with initial velocity, uh, four significant figures, acceleration, three significant figures, time, two significant figures. All right. First is estimate the distance traveled and the relative absolute approximate error. So let me just put in my numbers here. I'll say this is uh, uh, V0 is, is uh, 1.501. And then I have G, and this is 9.81. Then I have T, and this is 21. Okay. And then this is distance. Uh, the distance estimate is going to be equal to V0 times T plus one-half, which is 0 0.5, times g times t squared. All right, now how did this come? Uh, this is t. Okay. Excel does this automatic replacement. Okay. Okay. All right, so now how many digits are, 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 do we want to do here? Well, let's, we'll, we'll have to uh, uh, figure that out later. We want to figure out the relative absolute error. And this is the challenging part. What you need is the formula for derivatives. And let me get that for you. Now, what I said was wrong. I don't mean the formula for errors, uh, for derivatives. I mean the formula using derivatives. And I pulled this off of the course guide. The uh, delta F is going to be equal to these va these values. So let me grab this formula and paste it into my spreadsheet and see what I can do with it. So I'll make this big. I'll just paste the formula over here. Hopefully it'll paste. There we go. All right, uh, yeah, I'll just put it here, it's okay. All right, now, what I need to do in order to apply this formula is I need a derivative of a function and a delta. Now, these x1, x2, x3 refer to variables. And I have my three variables here, v0, g, and t. The f refers to my function, which is given by my formula. So let me just insert the formula here. And the formula was uh, v0 t, I uh, just do v0 times t plus 0 0.5 times g times t squared. I just need that, putting that there for reference. Just a little bit here. Now notice that for each term I need a delta and a derivative. 
I said for each term, I should have said for each variable, right? For variable x1, I need a delta and a derivative, delta and a derivative, delta and a derivative. Okay. So I have, here I have delta and my derivative. Now what's the, de what's the delta? Delta is my estimated error in this number, all right? Now here I took it out to four significant figures. So the delta, worst case, is 0, 0, 0, 5. Delta here, worst case, is 0, 0, 5. Delta here, worst case, is, is 0.5. Okay. These are the errors corresponding to the numbers of sig figs here. Now, what are the derivatives? Well, here's where everybody uh, uh, went, went out to calculus lunch. Uh, you need to take the derivative with respect to each one of these variables. Now, how do you take the derivative with respect to v0? You just treat v0 as your x and everything else is a constant. So you're varying only v0 and nothing else. So this second term has no v0 in it whatsoever. Now that's a constant, derivative of a constant is 0. Derivative of v0t, well v is a variable, t is a constant. That's just like taking the derivative of x times a and the result is a. So the derivative here is just actually t. So the derivative here is t. What about the derivative with respect to g? Well, this term has no g in it, so its derivative is 0. This term multiplies a g. That's, this term is like constant times g. Taking the derivative of constant times g with respect to g just gives me that constant. So this derivative is equal to 0 0.5 times t squared. Right now, how about t? What's the derivative with respect to t? Well, this one here is v0t. If I take the derivative with respect to t, it's just v0. So the first term is v0. Then the second term, well, if I take the derivative of this with respect to t, I have a t squared here. The t squared derivative pulls down a t, uh, pulls down a 2. The 2 cancels the 0 0.5, gives me 1. Then I multiply by g. And then I have a t left over after I take the derivative. So it's going to be equal to this first term plus g times t. Okay. Now, what I want to do here then is take the this times this plus this times this plus this times this three terms. So it's actually this times this plus this times this plus this times this. And uh, let's see. So let's. So instead of this, let me say the uh, the. Uh, uh, to this is just the. Uh, amp I'll do the absolute error, because this is actually a formula for the absolute error. The absolute error would be, as I said, this times this absolute value of that plus this times this absolute value of that plus this times this absolute value of that. Since they're all positive, I don't need the absolute values. And I'm going to use this fancy function in Excel called sum product which takes exactly what I need. It's basically the dot product of these two series of numbers. I can take this series with this series. And that, like I said, that looks fancy, but basically it's just this times this plus this times this plus this times this. All right, that's the absolute error. Now let me go back and make sure I'm going to do what the, uh, the problem is asking me to do. It says, give the relative absolute error in percent. So let me do this. It's, here's relative absolute error. This is percent. And what that's going to give me, I'll just put in this one here. It's equal to the absolute error divided by the, the, uh, the distance estimate. And then multiplied by 100. And there we go. And then it says for me to give your error estimate to two digits. So that would be 4.8. Okay, so this is an answer. This was the first, okay, so this, was a, this is an answer. Now, if this is my error estimate, then how many significant figures in a distance estimate? Well, the two is significant, one is significant, is the nine significant? The answer is yes, because 4.8 is less than 5. The only way that 9 could change and not be correct 
is if the 4.8 changed over to a over to a 5. Okay, so that means that uh, we have three significant figures. So here's the distance estimate. This is three sig figs, and that's going to be two one nine zero. And you don't want to put a decimal point because that would indicate four significant figures, right? So this would be the right answer. And actually, this is the answer for part B, and this is the answer for part A. So let's just make that more clear. This is the answer to part B, and then this one, the answer to part A. Let me make a different color, like this. All right. Well, let's take a look at the next, the next question. It says, and I think this was supposed to be sort of a challenge, how many significant figures of t would be needed to be given in order to have an estimate of relative error that's valid within 0.1%? Okay, now here we have 4%. Let's go back here. So to keep that in mind, 0.1%. Here you have 4% error. So you'd certainly need t to be more accurate than 4%. All right, now you may think this is cheating, but now that I've done this with a spreadsheet, it's quite easy to do this. If you didn't have a spreadsheet, you could do it with trial and error. If I, ha if I add another significant figure to t, that then that would just make this 0.05. Okay. So in this case, my relative a absolute error is 0.52%. Uh, and then if I go 0 0.005 like this, then this is within 0.1%. So that means I would have one, two, three, four significant figures. All right. So uh, let me say this. Uh, so I'll just say uh, for, for part C, by trial and error. And then this is going to be uh, by trial and error be four sig figs. I will tell you that nobody got this. So uh, that's OK. It's a challenging problem. But hopefully you can see from here the power of using software to do these things. Sorry, I mislabeled this. Uh, this is part A, so I can say this is part A. This is the first part of A. Or I can say this is the, this is the estimate, and then this is the error estimate. And then this is part B for significant figures. All right, let's go on to problem four. Problem four gives you the first three derivatives of e to the cosine x. And then here it says, using this information, write the first three terms of the Taylor series for e to the cos x with expansion point a equals pi over two. All right, so let's go get the formula. We can go back to the course outline. See if we can find that. It should be here. Okay. So let's look for Taylor. Go to find and then look for Taylor. No matches. Oh, there's a match. Okay, so let's look down and see. And there are different ways of expressing Taylor. All right, let's do this because I've got my expansion point A. So let me just copy this guy. This is the other way that we used in the spreadsheet or in the coding. It's the same deal. Let me paste that here so we can see it. And this is problem four. Okay. And let's see what we have to do here. Not here, let's go here. Okay, so we want the first three terms of the Taylor series with expansion point A equals pi over two. All right, so let me write that down. My A is pi over two. So this is the point A. That's equal to pi is this way over two. And then I want the first three, I have the first three derivatives. Now let me see what exactly what I want. Oops, not this one. I can close this because I don't need it anymore. I've already got the, all the information I need. Let's go back to the exam. And so let's see, what am I doing? Sorry, let's, let's see, uh, uh, first three terms. First three terms. All right, first three terms, then I'm gonna need the function value and the first derivative and the second derivative. Okay. 
So let's go ahead. So let's let's do this is f of a. This is f prime of a. And then f double prime of a. And let's, for good measure, we'll go f triple prime of a. That's fine. Okay. All right, now, it told me what the derivatives are. It said that the derivatives are here, here, and here. Those are the first three derivatives. Now, I need the derivatives at the point A. All right. So let's go ahead and use the value. Now, my function is e to the cosine x. Okay. So if I want f of a, I think I can uh, kind of compress this a little bit and so we can see this. All right. Function is e to the cosine x. So f of a is going to be equal to e to the cos and then my x here, because I want the function at the point a, I'm going to put a in. I get one. That's nice. Now what's f prime of a? Well, let's plug this, let's plug this in. So it's equal to negative sine of a times e to the cosine of a. Okay. That's my first derivative. Then my second derivative is going to be equal to uh, let's get this here. This is sine squared. And you can't put sine like the sine squared like that. You have to do sine of a squared minus cosine of a times exponent of, whoops, I think I need an ex another parenthesis here, times exponent of cosine of a. I think that's good. Okay, I think I'm all right. So let's check my formula. All right, here's sine of a squared minus cosine of a times e to the cosine of a. Okay, all right. So I think we're good. All right, those are my first three derivatives. And let's leave off the. Let's. Uh, those are the first two derivatives. Uh, that's all I need to get the first three terms. So let's go back to finding the first three terms. Now what I need is to find uh, f of a. So I've got that already. I have f prime of a. Then I need x minus a. So I need the point x. What is the point x? x is the great unknown. The point x is, well, since I want the Taylor series, I just leave x as x. I'm just doing this for general x. So I want the Taylor series. So let's just keep it that way. So the Taylor series is going to be f of a, which is 1, plus f prime of a times x minus a. Now f prime is minus 1. So I'm going to have a minus uh, x minus a. So my a is pi over 2. Then plus f double prime of a over 2 factorial times x minus a squared. X, f double prime is 1. So I have plus uh, 1 over 2 times x minus a. And a is pi over 2 squared. Now that's my Taylor series. All right, so let's go on to part a, part b. So this is part a. And part B says, use the remainder formula. Estimate the error when your expression in B is used to estimate e to the cosine pi over 3. Okay. All right, so I want to estimate the error. I didn't even ask for the value. So I want to use the remainder formula to estimate the error. All right. So I'm using this expression. Let's go ahead to my course outline and get my error expression. Well, here's my course outline. I know I'm looking for Taylor series with remainder, so I'm going to look for remainder. Okay, and then uh, that's not it. 
here we go. Here's my remainder. All right. So Rn of x plus h, now this is using the x plus h, so I'm going to have to translate that into my current uh, notation. So let me just copy that, and we can move that out of the way. Move that here, move that here. Okay. All right, now in this case, the remainder formula, the n is equal to what? Well, I've taken the first three terms, but this is the x squared term, so my n is 2. So my n is equal to 2. And what is my value of h? Well, h is the difference between my expansion point, a, and the point I'm trying to find. Okay. Uh, you can see that here also. If we go back to the well, I, I, I guess I, I uh, removed it. Well, here we go. It's back again. So if you notice the difference between this formula and this formula, wherever there's an h here, there's an x, x minus a here. So the h I'm going to use is just x minus a. The x I'm using is what? Well, go back to the, go back to the problem. It says, I want to estimate e to the cosine of pi over 3. All right. So my a was pi over 2, my x is pi over 3. So here I'm going to say x is equal to pi over 3. Okay, and my value of h is going to be equal to x minus a. So that's going to be equal to, here's my x, and here's my a. So very good, I got my h, I've got my n, n is 2, and now I, all I need is this thing here. What I need is the third derivative of my function at some point c between x and a. Okay. Let me say that again, I need the third derivative of my function at some point between x and a. Now let's look at the uh, problem. The problem says, use the fact that on this interval, the absolute value of the third derivative is less than 4. Okay? So I don't need the fourth derivative, I need the third derivative. So the absolute value of the third derivative is less than 4. That means that this term here, absolute value of this term is less than 4. Okay? So here I can say the max of f third derivative. on the interval is 4. Okay. So here I'll say re the remainder okay, is going to be equal to, then I've got all the pieces. I have my h, and I'm going to take the absolute value. I've got it, my h raised to the power, well raised to what power? n is 2. Whoops, I don't know how that happened. We'll get back there. Whoa. In fact, why don't I do this? Just to arrange it a little bit better. Uh, let me just... I've got my h. I've got my n. Well, here, let me rearrange this. I think I'll make, put an n here and then I'll put 2 here. Whoops, that's 2. I've got my h, I've got my n. And I have my maximum of my f prime. So, remainder is going to be equal to, and I'll do the absolute, absolute error, h to the power and then the power is going to be this plus 1 divided by the factorial of, well I'm just going to get this, this is going to be 3 factorial or 6 and then that's going to be times uh, the derivative here and let's see what it wanted, oh I forgot the cl to close it let's just make sure it's a correct val value all right, this I've got h to the, well, let's just make that a 3 because I know it's a 3. h cubed over 6 times the derivative. So let me just put an extra parenthesis just in case we're not. Uh, so we get the same answer. And taking two sig, nig, two sig figs, that would be 0 0.096. All right, that's the key to the written part, and I'll do the coding part 
uh, in a separate video.